Hi. Uh, hello. <laughs> Were we going in? <laughs> Oopsie. This is the first time you smiled. Hi. Hello. Hey. It's us. That's because you came in with a little sedac. Hi. Hello. hello. Welcome to the Rush Vibes Hotline. That's when you need to put in some smooth jazz in the background. But thanks for not getting frustrated with me. No, it was it was actually really funny. Was it? I yeah, wasn't trying you, to be. The way you came. Because hey, I was trying to jam. I saw the back, I saw the back arc too and you just. Hey, hello, he felt it. Hey. He felt, he felt it. Yeah. Um, I, I missed, I missed my cue. So. No, you didn't miss it. You were fine. I, uh. I, I couldn't tell if we were really going in. Yeah, we're was, going in. Well, the music was, being, was playing. I think I was being silly, so I anticipated that we had another moment. Look, and then I usually like take a minute to, you know, enjoy the the beat. No, it's um and start singing. It's so almost I think eleven. It's, a, it's almost eleven o'clock at night. It's been a full day. It has been, but I didn't. No get days to do off my, this my week. Drum roll. No holidays. No, no half days. No nothing. No teacher work day. You got, but you got Monday. You gotta make it. Yeah, till, I gotta get there. Gotta make it till Friday. I have to get there. Um, but yeah, I was watching some of our. I was watching our YouTube post and realized I do my. Yeah. I didn't realize it was like a thing. Um. So I, I I wasn't sure if I should wait for someone to notice it or if I should call it out. But right. here we are, uh, week two of 2021. You gonna introduce us? I am. Okay. I'm just checking. I was going to ask how you were doing. You got to say, I'm just. And- I, well, uh, okay. Well, I feel He's like. He's royal. I'm not going to do all that. Highness. I'm not, I'm not going to give you all, all of the, the accolades I, I got normally my, give I got my itch shirt on. I'm my- I still haven't finished introducing. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm Jess. This is my alleged husband, David. Alleged. <laughs> um, on a good day. Um, this is my husband, David. And we are Mr. and Mrs. Rushed Vibes, but honestly, we're just Rushed Vibes. Um, I should get like a Rushed Vibes tattoo, like right here. No, no, no. no? Oh, okay. No. I don't have any tattoos. I'm too scared of needles. But um, we're here in the flesh. Week. You, you don't have any tattoos that you know. Of. <laughs> I, I trust me. <laughs> trust me. If anyone yeah. knows that you don't have tattoos, yeah, it's, it's true. me. That's true. Um, that's very true. How are you doing? I'm great. I got on my my it shirt that my adopted little big, big brother, big little brother, uh, Alan bought me some years back. I think it was around the time when the first it came out, first remake of it came out. He's got a, an uncomfortably big head. Time to float. Well, this is the original it. This is the original Pennywise, um, but you, know, you can still pay homage while you're celebrating the new the new thing so yes you can time i've to, got my uh, time to float my bay oh sorry oh <laughs> i've got my bay shirt on I'm, I'm having some technical difficulties i just uh unplugged my aux cable Cut. um but yeah it says bu- bu- <laughs> it says bougie and educated and you got this for me um, i did i got it from uh, a brother on social media named dr tank dr tank yeah, he's got his own uh, t-shirt line, Tank at Dr. Tank Educates, I believe is what it's called. I will drop a link to his shop in the show notes as well as the description here on YouTube. He was kind enough to let me buy <laughs> <laughs> three shirts from him. I, I was introduced to him through a uh, good mutual friend, my um, accountability partner for when I was completing my master's degree, um, James. He, uh, I, I met him. Through. Actually, we never actually really met. We exchanged messages because I bought the shirts and then he wanted to um, advertise that on his page. So we, we exchanged a few messages. But yeah. Well, cool. Well, so I'll drop all that information down in the description you, and then also in the, in the David link. David has one that says black and educated. Um, yeah, I actually wore it on a, uh, on a business, on a, on a, on a work conference call. <laughs> and uh, I've, I've decided that, you know, in... The, the last company I worked for, uh, because I was a trainer and I was leading a lot of, of the, the sessions that I was a part of, uh, our director said that we always had to have our cameras on because if we're instructing, you know, subjects need to need to see us. So I've kind of brought that mentality over uh, since I've changed positions uh, or changed companies. I always have my video camera on and I used to be like really um, kind of, I wouldn't say suppressed, but I used to be really conservative with like how I dressed and, and, you know, code switch. <laughs> like, yes, I, but I agree, Bob. But now 
um, ever since everything that happened this summer and the realization that I was suppressing my my actual self when I was code switching or when I was trying to be a lighter um, uh, version of myself when I was on these conference calls, I was like, you know what? Nah, no more. So I wore my, my Bay shirt on a, uh, on a uh, conference call with uh, regional leadership. So just in case they weren't aware that he was black and educated, <laughs> yeah. he made it very. And it wasn't very clear. it wasn't intentional. Like, yeah, I'm wearing his pay shirt. I just had it on, and I was like, oh, I got these conference calls, so I'll just I'll just wear it. Um, but my my company now is pretty cool. I mean, they're they're uh, everybody is um, pretty uh, lenient and, and open and understanding to kind of give everybody the opportunity to just kind of be who they are and express themselves. I've grown dreadlocks since since I started. I remember when I when I interviewed, I think I had the the fade, the little afro fade, mm-hmm. um, and now I got dreadlocks. Jessica, actually, before we came on, before I won't say came on air, but before we started recording, Jessica actually told me that I looked homeless that because I was in I was in a hoodie and my my lounge pants. It is just and I have black, my, I have my hat on, so pants. I just have my my locks out. And then like a shirt that was longer than his hoodie. <laughs> And he just—I told him I was going to call home. the police and say that there's a squatter trying to. I'm at home. <laughs> what are you? Over. What are you drinking? I have Crown Royal Peach with my favorite Trader Joe's peach mango orange. Juice. Oh my gosh, it's so good! It's so fantastic. I'm not really a fan of Trader Joe's because it like, causes you to spend a whole lot of money anytime you no. go. <laughs> but that juice is not only is it healthy, but it. it no, no, no. That's not the lemon ginger at Chinese. Oh. Well, that that's good too. Yes, it it's is. all healthy, right? Yeah, I mean, okay. it's straight. Well, not only is it healthy, but it, it hits too. So that's a rare combination. Uh, I'm drinking Bullet. Uh, nothing, nothing too fancy. I had to drop a couple ice cubes in there. Should we toast? Sure. Cheers. Cheers. To episode six Seis. of Rush Vibes. Also, uh, we I told you guys on the last episode uh, that we're big on milestones. Shout out to Twisted T Vibes as it now has hit over 101 views. First video to do. Numbers, <laughs> numbers. <laughs> yeah, relatively speaking, uh, 101. That's 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 a big accomplishment. I don't think anything I've ever put out is 100 people have watched or or reacted to it. So that's pretty exciting. Uh, now we just got to keep got to keep building. So thank thank going. you everyone out there for for watching, supporting, subscribing, liking, sharing, commenting, and reviewing. If you haven't done that yet, rewind. Listen to everything I said and make sure you do every one of those things in, after, that, order. in that order after in that we order. get done. With the Oxford comma. Uh, the Oxford comma. <laughs> he, so before we even dive into mm-hmm. anything. No, what? we're not doing this. Doing what? I don't know. Whatever. I felt like you were about to make fun of me. No, I'm, oh, okay, about, to, I'm about to plead to my people. Okay. Um, so we are still, we are among those millions of Americans still currently waiting for our Stimmy. Stimulus, stimulus check. Stimmy, and where you at? boy here, I swear, comes down. You know when you were a little kid and you were expecting mail and you were so eager to go to the mailbox? That's David. And where his office is, he has a perfect view of the street. So Bird's he, eye view, baby. He can time. I'm like that old that old white lady <laughs> in the neighborhood who's always watching when peeking through the corner of her blinds. Kids. when making noise uh, so he knows when the mail oh, man has come so he you, you'll hear the mail truck and then just like within i know i can hear the mail truck i can hear the mail truck when it turns into the neighborhood like around the block i'm like my ears perk up I'm like <laughs> it's the mail truck <laughs> so he has eager he eagerly runs down the stairs he's like time to get that stimmy um and then i do my, I stimmy, I do my stimmy rain dance <laughs> i'm coming down the steps and then I have to watch him disappointedly walk. And he's smart. He's he's gotten smart now. He doesn't look at the mailbox. He he brings the mail into the house and then prepares his heart for disappointment of not finding it. So he he gets into the house and he stands probably like two feet from where I'm sitting right now. And he will see that like he'll go through all the junk mail because that's all we seem to get these days, like furniture ads and stuff. And then he'll see that there's no stimulus check, and I Stimmy. feel for I feel for him, I really do. Um, but I, um, we just talked about Trader Joe's, and a lot of people know that Trader Joe's is my boy. Like that's my store, that's my happy place. Um, forget therapy, like send, put me in Trader Joe's without a budget, um, and you will probably make me the happiest woman on the planet. So for those of you out there, 
um, if you've ever loved something or loved a place or appreciated a place, I want you to join me in one accord, not two accords, not a civic, but one accord, a 2021 accord. As I plea with my husband <laughs> that no. when my half of the stimulus check there is comes, no half. That there is he, no, there that, is no half. There is a stimulus a, check that he gets a spirit upon him to say, "Babe, go to the grocery stores no, putting, of your choosing putting, and shop to your heart's delight." That's all I want to do. If I could show you guys the grocery list I have, and I'm really like, how can I? How how can I convince my husband to just let me rain amok and fill this run, house? Run amok. I want to rain amok. No, I want to rain. rain. That's not how it, you I, can't you can't do that. That's just, just not did. the saying. I just did. I want to rain terrible. amok. <laughs> Look, I'm putting sand at the door so none of these spirits that you're trying to summon come into the house. I'm, I'm putting sand at the. At the I want to rain amok door. in Trader Joe's, all the windows, and Sam's Club. No spirits. I just want to buy all the things that are on my grocery list. Yeah, whatever. That's my that's my dream. That's my goal for twenty twenty one. Real quick, to before have we... a grocery shopping experience that when I go to the store with my list, I can buy absolutely yeah, everything okay. I so want. Can... So please join me okay, is... in our accord, in one accord that he's not riding in, to convince him to let me go on my grocery shopping. Yeah, spree. whatever. So, um, real quick before we get into the the actual nitty gritty. You can't see it. So it for yep. you all audibly, we, we are got Hamilton coasters holding them up. Courtesy of my my guy, uh, Jarrell, who is um, uh, I think Rizzle. I've sur- I think I've surpassed him in terms of my my Hamilton in terms of Hamilton fandom. He uh, oh, he, was he, he up had, there? He had no. He admitted. Well, he's he was the Hamilton junkie, and then he. He passed, passed the, the, he passed me the. You took the torch. <laughs> he passed me the syringe, and then um, I kind of went to a whole other level. I think he actually even admitted on our last. We have a, a group of friends that we all we get together uh, about about once a month, and we we do a video chat. I think he admitted that I probably have seen Hamilton more more than he has, and that's that's yeah. saying a lot. But he uh, he sent us these over for for Christmas. So Jake, thanks, Drew. We we, we appreciate definitely you. appreciate it. All right, so so. I all, I want to put a disclaimer out that I have no idea what we're talking about lies. today because lies. These are absolute Jessica lies. Is, he he does know what we're talking yeah. about. He just doesn't remember. We literally had a conversation about what we could discuss. I was on autopilot. So he was on not listening. I to was his like, wife. damn, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, what's crazy? Oh, first, we're gonna start with the bus it challenge. What's up? Oh, oh, <laughs> spare me. There is not, I would say there's uh, not a black man in America, but there are pro- there's probably most bus men. People are taking buses. Where are they going? Most men in America are Why are people, why are people riding the bus? The bus it challenge. Um, are they busing to like polling, polling stations? Anyway, are we, are we, are we so busing black men to go <laughs> register to vote? <laughs> nice, nice try. So it snuck up on me a few days ago. Uh, I think when it, when it started, um, and I, I've seen all these girls like dancing. Well, you have to the, you have to break it down what the challenge is for those who are. I don't really know like the detail. Like, so you start you start off dancing to "Hot in Here" by no. Nelly, no. and you're looking no, it's a, no, "Bust It" is a song I believe, or "Drop It." It's a song that covers at the beginning Nelly's "Hot in Here," and then it it switches to, the, to okay, an actual well, song. I mean, I don't know this stuff. Um, That's what I'm telling you. I listen to NPR. I'm pure in your words. You are not pure. Uh, I haven't done a busted challenge, so I am pure. So it's, it's a very snuck, low bar. <laughs> it snuck up on me. Yeah, the song's um, called Busted. And I was actually really impressed. Um, the way I was introduced to it, it was very much so magnifying, just like just the greatness of women, the greatness of black women, the diversity, their ability to go from like basic to just amazing uh, in what looks like a few seconds, but probably took several hours. So me being the millennial that I am, I, I had watched enough of these that I was like, you know, it'd be kind of cute if I, if I did this. So one thing that I, um, I had to remember somebody's mother. I'm two people's mother. Again, we've done this. We, it doesn't matter. One of the women did the busted challenge with her baby. 
her baby started like backing that's, up and she grabbed her and stopped her. That's so despicable. That's so despicable. Um, I was like, let me see, let me see what I can do. Let me see. Thanos was right. Can I sna- <laughs> can I snap you out of here so I can finish you my can statement? Try. You can see what happens. Um, so I was like, let me try. So you know, I I still have that youthful ability to at least drop down, but that's all I can do. I can just drop. Um, any additional? Are you? Mo- are, wait, is this your way of telling me? That you did a busted challenge video? I didn't do the video. I was practicing to see if I was if I had the capabilities. So I'm assuming since there's been no video. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me. That you haven't okay. been able. To I had it stretched. I wasn't. I wasn't limber. No, I can. Pop, I can. I can do the the vertical mo. I can go up and I can go down. So I uh-huh. I, I I busted down. Uh-huh. But the actual like. The remaining motion, yeah. I, 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 if that was, I didn't have enough like longitude or latitude. Uh, I didn't have whatever. I didn't have enough gravitational support to okay. be able to do the the remainder of the challenge. So I have opted out of doing the challenge. Uh, I, I, I think I've said it before that I don't have the Meg the Stallion Stallion knees, and I didn't believe people when they said on the other side of thirty, like like once you hit thirty, things just things just work differently. Your body's just like yo. You've put me through a lot. And I mean, I've done years of dance, ballet, tap, hip hop. Are you rolling your eyes? No. Oh. No, 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 I had something. Um, like you're rolling your eyes. No, no, no. Uh, I played sports. I've just walked in heels for an excessive <laughs> look. Um, I've birthed two people. I've had to deal with him. That that does, takes a number on your joints. Uh, Time to float. <laughs> So my body just was like, no, girl. So to everybody who did that challenge, who's above the age 30, I applaud you. I wanted to. Like I, I, was, apl- I applaud you as well. I thought you didn't know di- what it was. <laughs> for different reasons. Um, I thought you didn't know what it was. What's the busy challenge? I thought. People are busting their Yeah, the they, people are um, anyway, riding see, the, nice the city try, buses nice, to, to help generate nice, local revenue, nice tax try, revenue. Nice try. Uh, nice. Because we're trying to get the, you know, the, the, uh. Light rail. Don't don't you know, don't try to save yourself. We you we know you your little, extra revenue yeah, for the city. Lustful eyes watching the the busted challenge. I ain't mad at you. Some so the them, problem is when you some of them the, were cute. The, well, the problem is is when you have these viral videos and these challenges because they all they all involve video and video is is a good way for things to go viral, right? You don't see a lot of text uh, social media posts that that go viral unless they're like a picture of a tweet or a picture of an Instagram. And at that point, or one it's, of those it's, chain it's letters. Still a, yeah, it's, it's still, still the picture. So you watch one, and then your your algorithm is like, oh, this is hot. And you watched it. You watch 15 seconds of it. So clearly, this is something you're interested in. So every time I'm scrolling, every time I'm in the discovery tab for Instagram, it's just like bust it, bust it, bust it, bust it, bust it, bust it. So you know, I figure, you know, I, I, you know, Tim Cook sold me a beautiful phone, you know, uh, Facebook developed a beautiful, beautiful app and Instagram. So if I'm on it, you know, I might as well enjoy it, you know, and if is the, who am I to tell Instagram that the content they've put before me is not sufficient. So I figure I'll watch a couple. Oh, okay. Let, let there be like some kind of man so busted challenge. There better not and be no, see, they, they better see, be on a bus. See, see, this is my point. That exactly. better be, they, they better How actually he, be on a bus. He accidentally, you know, I'm just going to support the, the trend and watch a few videos and it's cool. But if there was some kind of man bus it challenge and I watched it and you found out that I watched it, you'd be all, well, I'd want an annulment. Lust in your eyes. I'd want an annulment <laughs> immediately. <laughs> so this is probably, I've only done. Through the pandemic, I've only done one challenge. I did the uh, Don't Rush, Don't Rush challenge with Don't uh, rush. several other moms, and we did it with our baby, our girls. But who who put that video together for you? Uh, some dude. Some uh, some dude. Oh, some dude. <laughs> uh, some dude who's watching the Busted Challenge <laughs> recently. <laughs> yeah. Love so man. I I did a tasteful. Rocky, but I, Rocky, I gathered right some wholesome, wholesome mom friends of mine who had daughters, and we did a tasteful. Oh, please! Don't. It was tasteful. We did a tasteful. Don't rush. That's wholesome. the only challenge that I did. I tried to do uh, jump on the whole the Meg the Stallion. I the choreography was just too. I think I watched like an hour's worth of it, and you know the hips TikTok. I had like. <laughs> five counts and then it was just too much and i gave up because i realized you know i'm 30 i'm i'm somebody's mama i'm two people's mama 
Um, now, that, now that's relevant. And I'm tired. No, it's just that I'm tired. I'm mm. too tired to take the time yeah. to jump on these 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 trends. And it's it's monthly. It's weekly. It's, it's exhausting. Not. Well, you it's don't not. you don't follow trends like that, so you don't you don't know. So sit there. How do you know I don't follow trends? Because you don't do trends. That's why you're upstairs looking homeless before we got on the phone. Why you be disrespect? I'm, dang. What did I do? Because you were getting ready to come for me. So I had to I, knock it down. I, wasn't. I had to knock it down. So. Man, it's not without honor. Um, except, <laughs> except in his own man, home. Man, take your honor somewhere else. In so, yeah, life. I, um, I like, there's a part of me that still wants to mm, be. I need counseling. Like, youthful and Therapy. still wants to jump on these trends. I've been emotionally. But I'm always conflicted. Abused. Because I, I feel like some People have personalities when they do certain things, like when they do a busted it challenge, when they do some of these things that can kind of be on the more provocative side. People are like, oh, yeah, that's just that's that's who she is. That's what she does. But there are other people that the image that they put out doesn't warrant that support. So I feel as if I if I did a bus it challenge to the extent that everyone else is doing it, people would be clutching pearls like Jess, how could you, Jessica, why would she? How would she? So I, I I don't know. Um not saying that I want to. That's a lot of thigh um to put in in a frame for me. Uh and I I take that smirk off your face. Sorry. You're, creep um yeah, i'm not a creep I'm but married. i do i do appreciate it and There's i i know it can go it can go two ways because some people can be like oh that's scandalous blah 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 but i like to look at it and see the beauty that comes with it and it's like look at the transformation it's it's artistic being able to look one way and then you know jazz jazz yourself up and and now you're just whew, amazing so i i do appreciate it you're not gonna see it from me unfortunately one because i just don't have the editing skill i have the editing skills i just don't have the editing patience to do it and i know he's not gonna do it for me we gonna bust, bust, bust it up for a show it all whatever i don't know she's gonna say some grandpa statement like that um it reminds be- me of this um there's this uh there's this cut uh anytime there was like a, a- provocative uh video challenge or whatever that be going on that involved women um somebody would would take a video and then it would go six or seven seconds into it and then it would cut to there was this dude like slapping the camera with his bible <laughs> and he pulls it back with this, with this judgy look like <laughs> so that's something i would do yeah um i shared a, a video to my ig there's this couple uh, I think the wife is American and the husband's Nigerian and she did it like she's doing the first half of the busted challenge and then she drops down and then he comes back and he throws <laughs> a pot of water like busted for who for what um, and I felt like that's that's what we that's what we would do like not nah, yeah. not nah, check you you ain't busting it for nobody nah. else um, but yeah I just you know I, mean, I you mean what what you mean I'm just saying. what I can do it I mean, bringing in some Generate some revenue. What's the ROI on the bus on the bus challenge? You get a couple donations. Um, you might be able to work yeah. something out. I might yeah, be able no. to turn turn the other cheek. Yeah, no, no pun. Mm, okay, Ooh, all right, Jess. See what I did there. Rare but yeah, no, I just wanted to to just address that you ladies out there who are doing it and just transforming yourself. Yeah, killing it. It's amazing. Some of y'all, I, I did raise an eyebrow too. There was a, uh, there was one where uh, this chick dropped down and she had on like a uh, like a Hillary Clinton pantsuit, <laughs> and so some dude retweeted. It was like, man, take that mess to LinkedIn. We're not trying to, <laughs> that's not what we're looking for on Twitter. No, that so. That is Mind funny. your surroundings if you're going to drop a busted challenge. Yes. Know where you at. But you shared one with <laughs> I sure with what? the late. I think you sent it to me or you put it on Facebook. But it was the lady oh, who yeah, had yeah, yeah. the the backpack and, and she the lady who fell. She the, fell. Off. She building. she does the drop and then it shows the woman falling off of the Capitol building and um that was that was everything. That was probably the best way to conclude that challenge i feel like that yeah, ch- that challenge good. needs to be done now um but yeah good. i i appreciate being able to see the the beauty and just some of y'all and your hip action is just amazing the 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 ability you have to be on your knees in heels and rock and sway your hips i applaud 
applaud that. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how many yoga classes so, um, I would have to take to accomplish that, but I did want to give you all a shout. Yeah. Um, you're inspiring. Yeah. So uh, we're going to move on to the next topic. For, this uh, is where we're going to insert before, our busted challenge. Before we do that, let's take a quick break. From my sponsor. Sponsors. I know he cut me off before I finished saying sponsors. So I we just finished watching episode two of this season of The Bachelor. Now I don't know how we as a couple got into watching The Bachelor. Uh I honestly I can't remember. I think it was just on and we saw the drama that took place many, many years ago and just kept sticking with it. And initially it was, you know, how far can the miscellaneous black girl or black guy get before they get booted off. Needless to say, we didn't watch very long. In early we, seasons. we usually don't. I, I try to keep watching, but once David loses interest, it's kind of like, he's low key, like the dictator of the TV. Of, of, How? Of what no, we, I'm not. no, you dictate what we watch. So nah. when he has his favorite nah. and once his favorite is, is kicked off male or female, he's just done. And he just hate, he hates the franchise. He hates whoever is the bachelor or the bachelorette. So this season, I still think Rachel should have chosen Eric. So I know Ra- she's got. I know she's got. Uh, what's what's dude's name? Chris. No, Ryan. it's not. It. Um, it's not Chris. I can't. I can't think of it. But uh, Carlos. No, stop. No, it's not Carlos. But anyways, go ahead. Okay, Sorry. so. We, so this year with everything that happened, well, excuse me, last year with everything that happened, ABC finally realized that, you know, their, their racist ways had been showing and they had gone out of their way to kind of avoid having a black bachelor. And there was a time where someone had said, you know, the, the network wasn't prepared for what like comes with a black bachelor insinuating drama. Um, because of course you can't have a black bachelor and then black female bachelorettes as candidates for his heart without there being some kind of drama. Um, what's the word when you're spoiler? Oh yes. Spoilers. We're talking about the bachelor. Bachelor. So if you haven't seen the first night or the second night, which was tonight, tonight, (laughs) uh, stop stop. listening and then go watch it and then come back and finish listening. Um, but spoiler, the drama is actually coming from a white girl. Yes. So, um, we've got our first black bachelor. We really only got him because of, you know, the, the, the moment with the black spotlight I feel in America. I think uh I think when we when we got Rachel Lindsay, who uh probably should have won probably should have been chosen in Nick yes. Bale's season. I think she got like to the last three, last four. Um when she was chosen for the Bachelorette, I I'm pretty sure it was only a matter of time before they had a black bachelor because they had what there were two there have been two three. bachelor seasons in between Rachel Lindsay's. Two bachelors and two bachelors. There was there was Ari, Colton, and who was this, who was the latest guy? Ben. No, Ben was before. Oh, um, Nick. it was it was some some Random. real some real basic looking dude. The uh, pilot. Yes, yes, the pilot. So there was there was three there were three bachelors and two bachelors. bachelors. So there have been five seasons. But I, I think they were still. Trending that way, we were, we were probably going to get one eventually. Um, I think, kind of like COVID, with uh, with like uh, businesses, you know how they've kind of scaled back and, and trimmed uh, headcount in, in certain respects. It, it was always going to happen, but COVID just sped it up. Mm-hmm. So I think with everything that happened this past summer, I think a Black Bachelor was always in ABC's pipeline. It just kind of sped it up a little bit it in only terms took of a 20, lot of the twenty some odd years. A lot of the the you know. Civil unrest that took place this yeah, and a lot they, of the ABC act, wasn't trying and, to lose that ty- Toyota sponsorship. And shout, and, and, but you know what? Shout out to everybody who got out. I'm going to take a quick, real quick tangent and aside. Shout out to everybody who got out there in the streets this summer and marched and protested for what you believe in and, and for what is right and for calling out racial injustice and systemic racism and just like. Shout out to everybody who went out there in a pandemic while a lot of people out there probably had been laid off or, and didn't or, cause a surge or, for, or, you or, fur, or furloughed or lost their jobs and were, was out there day after day after day after day in the dead middle of summer, uh, you know, utilizing your First Amendment, right? Like shout out to everybody who was out there doing it. And you've seen, you know, I think uh, the fruits of that labor are yet to be realized. 
Like, I think we put a, a I say we, cause I was out there myself, uh, put a whole lot of seeds in the ground. And I think, you know, we, we still have that fruit to bear. I, I think it's, it's a lot of the work that we did is, is still, you know, this is, is still getting ready to sprout. So shout out to everybody who was out there this summer. I just wanted to, to put that out there. Continue. We see you. We Continue. respect you. Um, we see you. We see love you. That was one of the chants. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> um, I was home with the children, but he was on Facebook Live and we streamed it to the TV and I made sure the one girl who could comprehend what was going on was aware and she was very proud of her dad. Um, so we finally have our Black Bachelor and he's he's not he doesn't like blow he's he doesn't like blow me away. He was a he he he's a safe he's a so safe there's, candidate. Yeah, there's not a lot of uh I'm sure he's he's nice. I'm sure yeah, he's, he's definitely nice. I'm sure he's definitely um and, and tell it, I'm, I'm doing the thing that he works. He works in finance, I believe. He's a realtor, real estate yeah. broker, and he's in, New, in York. New York. He has a great view Successful. from his apartment. Um, yeah, I've seen it. Good looking guy. Great he got his tall, very well figured, fit. I think he he played college football. Wake Forest. Shout out to to, to Winston Salem. Yeah. Um, very well figured, <clears throat> but he's just he's very he's, he's kind of he takes a lot of showers. I mean, they show it. Are you done? And they had him chopping wood. Goodness gracious! Yeah, cause shirtless. That, somebody always got to have their shirt off in, in these these shows. But uh, he he kind of lacked for me. It's it's a busted challenge for, <laughs> me, for some for some. <laughs> for me, he lacks uh, drama. No, he just doesn't have a lot of his his personality. He doesn't really have uh, a charismatic. There's not a lot of charisma about him. He's safe. He's he's, he's a very, safe pick for safe. introducing the first black male bachelor. And he does happen to be half white. His mother is white. Uh, personally, I wouldn't have known unless they show until they showed I knew, her. I, I knew it was mixed. No, you just no. Just, I did by looking. I I could tell. No. No. I. How are you gonna tell me what I I did? And because I, I know your I know your mind. And no, I know, you don't. I know it's knowledge. Nah, um, no. You he don't. doesn't. He, to me, he doesn't come off at like initial what you would normally think of when you see someone who is biracial, um, but. He, you know, comes from a single family. His mom raised him. He did, like, the first episode have a conversation with Chris Harrison, who is the host of Bachelor, who has, like, this smooth Bachelor swag. Yo, Chris is, Chris is the man. So he was talking to Chris about, you know, essentially being a black man and having these expectations. Fix your face, David. Having these expectations that are set upon him as the first black male Bachelor. And some of us... In this room, in this house, in on this podcast. You, no, you don't have to be are, you don't have to be discreet um, <laughs> at all. I'll raise my hand and speak to it. My issue is is look, yes, there is a great big elephant in the room, first black bachelor. Yes, we are all aware of this. But do not speak to a white man about the so called pressure of being the first black bachelor. Be, How's he going to be able to, can he relate? Has Chris Harrison ever been black at any point in his lifetime? No. Exactly. So I don't know. I don't know what that, that, that to me, I wasn't mad at, at his name's Matt, right? I wasn't mad at Matt. I was upset because I know ABC put that, that was a scripted, that conversation was scripted and it was, it was scripted by ABC. And I'm, I, I know reality shows are all scripted. And I know mm-hmm. there's, there's a very small uh, element of actual, organic um content yeah content uh but i just it felt forced and it felt unnecessary and and i felt like if that was a conversation that we were to see like i'm sure matt has some black uh men in his life mm-hmm. be it you know a, a brother half brother step brother cousin or whatever that he could have bounced that off of that abc could have captured by filming him saying that to a white man it's like it's it just felt forced and it felt kind of, it, I, I'm not going to be dramatic and say it was, you know, and, and cause an uproar, but it felt low key kind of like disrespectful because there's no way that Chris Harrison can give him any sort of tangible advice as to how to handle this as being the first black bachelor because Chris Harrison is not a black. He's never been the first black anything because he's a white man. So I just, I, that kind of made me roll my eyes 
and um, I could have done without it. Um, I am more so speaking on the context of the, the conversation. Uh, I do, I do agree that, you know, he should have saved that conversation. I mean, he should have found a black producer, black cameraman. I mean, I'm sure there's someone black. Um, I mean, it just doesn't make sense. It did. No, it didn't make sense for him to have that conversation in terms of seeking advice. And I love Chris Harris. That's uh, my guy. He could have just had the conversation in terms of this is how I feel. Um, but I'm not coming to you to give me advice as a white man on how me as a black man representing all of black America, black world, um, should feel. All of black America. But initially what he was, what he was trying to say was I'm the first black bachelor and there are women of all creeds that you guys are presenting to me. And there is a chance that I may fall in love with a white woman, a, an Asian woman, a black woman, but there's an expectation that because he's black, he should pick a black woman. Yes. And somebody <laughs> who is sitting next to me has the same expectation. Now, look, there's there. Let me, let, let me finish. I'm speaking. OK, dear. Um, <laughs> I, I get that. Because there, there's no, a there, go ahead, I mean, get, get to the butt because it's coming. There's but. a there's a universal black camaraderie. It's like when you watch Family Feud and there's the black family versus the white family. You always got a team with the black family. So you get more frustrated when they say something stupid. Lawn. <laughs> Pork oh, lawn. Oh, what's the name that starts with, with H? Jose. <laughs> um, so so you it, it's I, th- I I'm not speaking for all black people, but in my experience, my black experience when it comes down to, you know, there's a black option and a white option. I have to support the black person. You know, American Idol, when it was Ruben Stuttered and Clay Aiken, I had to go for Ruben because Ruben was black. This is my uh, song before 2004. Are you done? I miss Ruben. He's still there. <laughs> like he's, he's, not, he's not making music, though, is he? He's, he's singing something somewhere. So that's my... Ruben went out there, man, all them, them, them suits and stuff, and was sweating up a storm. Nobody gave him, like, a towel or anything. Like, sweat just... You'd have thought Ruben was... Rubber. <laughs> just sweating. Melting. I'm like, man, somebody give that man a towel. He's out there singing his heart out. Give that man a towel. And he won. He did. But we don't remember. We see more of Clay, but that's another injustice conversation for another time. So I understand the responsibility that he feels, that Matt as a black bachelor feels. So there's a part of me that's like, yes, you know, there's some beautiful black women there. Make that connection. Make it happen. On the contrary, love is supposed to be blind as Netflix showed us. So, if he does pick, if the intention of the show... When he does. <laughs> if the intention of the show is for Matt or whoever the Bachelor is to find love, then as a viewing audience, it is our responsibility to support him in whomever he chooses. Our preference is that he it. chooses... A black woman because we are black. Now the white, I'm sure white people are watching it and either they don't care who he picks or they, they're like, Oh, you know, pick, pick a white girl. Um, but I felt for him when he had that conversation with Chris, because I could tell that he genuinely was stressed about this. Like, here I am, I'm the black bachelor and I know the black people want me to pick a black woman. And I, I, I'm sure he knows there's a high probability that he's going to pick a white woman. I think that's just, you know, his mother's white and a lot of studies that I actually have not read and cannot verify and cannot. So confirm. why are you saying that? I just want, I just want to sound, um, have said that. You remember a lot- the thing I talked about one of the last episodes where I was told that I would discredit, I would pre discredit what I was going to say. Before I even said it, that's literally what you just did. Yeah, because I don't want anyone to. So to why ask you me you should you just ask shouldn't me for bring references. it up? Um, so there <laughs> are. I, for I, know, <laughs> I know there are studies that somebody has done. Uh, I mean, you can Google a study and find something to support your point. Where you know people have shown that men usually gravitate to women that are that resemble 
their sure. mother in some capacity. Sure. Uh, his mother happens to be white. He was raised by her. So I I am assuming that the uh, that his preference is probably leaning towards a white female, which is why he went in apprehensive saying, you know, I feel all this pressure to make a certain type of selection. That's just my assumption. I am also just here for the the drama and the drama that's brought by the white girls and not the black girls so that we can we can prove that like hey you know those stereotypes you've assumed that we can't be drama free are our lies um but it would be very nice in my opinion if he picked a black woman but i'm not hopeful that he will p- pick a black woman but at the same time brian that's rachel Lindsay's husband's name sorry it, it was it was bothering me it's brian Wow. Um, at the same time, there's this interesting conversation that we kind of touched on when it comes to interracial couples. And I talked about it this weekend. I went out to um, lunch with an old friend of mine who just happened to be in town for the holiday. And we were, you know, talking about how there's this catch 22 with interracial couples, at least as a woman, where if I see a white woman with a black man, I'm like, yes, like, you know, girl, you, you, you picked love and you, you found this black man and you took him home and your grandma was probably like, I don't really mess with these, but you still brought him home and you're fighting through and you're loving him and yeah, with the swirl. And then there's another part of me who looks at him and is like, so bro, you mean to tell me you couldn't find one black woman out there that, 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 that does it for you. So it's like this constant conflict of support and then cancellation of said support. And then it's the same vice versa. If I see a white guy with a black woman, I'm like, okay, girl, I see you. You know, the crossover, the, the crossover. I see it. And then him, I'm like, okay, I see you, sir. Step it over into our territory. Switching lanes, no signal. Snatching up one of ours. Okay with the swirl. I know grandpa don't like it. But you stood firm with your woman. But then on the other side, I'm just like, so, sis, you mean to tell me you couldn't find a black man that was good, that hold it down? So it's like, a, it's it's very, very conflicting. But love is blind and complicated. And I feel like you have some words to say and you've kept it <laughs> contained so I'm I'm gonna give you a chance to. Wow, you're gonna allow me to speak. I for, it's it's in hopes that you'll po- allow me to go, It's in hopes you'll allow me to go to Trader Joe's. Nah, I really don't. I mean, I have fun with it. Like me and my my like I said, my my adopted big little brother Alan. I mean, we we have fun with it. Uh, but I, I'm really not that invested in it, and I think the reason why uh, I have high hopes and high expectations that Matt would pick a black woman is because throughout the entire existence of this franchise, uh, black and a black woman has not been chosen uh, at the final, uh, as the final contestant in 20 some years. Uh, and, you, and it's just, you, you see the, I won't say the, the devaluing of, of black women, but you see how, uh, one could make the argument that ABC is projecting that the black a black woman is not as valuable as mm-hmm. these other demographics because not one bachelor contestant has chosen a black woman to be his wife. And we're amazing up until, up until this. Up in, uh, I mean, as of yet. So let it me would, tell y'all, and, we are and, amazing. And uh, bless it. It would just it would be nice, you know. And we've had uh, we've had two black. Bachelorettes, Rachel Lindsay, and then um, Tasia, who is black and, and Mexican, and we would definitely want to call out her her heritage because she, that's important to her. But neither one of them chose a black man as their as their uh, as their husband, or, or asked them to. Not, neither of them chose a, a black man or any other black contestants to propose to them, and that is their right. Like you said, love is blind, and you know, love is unique and uh, different to every single person. Like what they put emphasis on in terms of what love means to them so i'm not here to 
to criticize or, 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 you know, tear down anybody's relationship. I'm just saying that if for once it would be nice for the bachelor or bachelorette to pick, you know, a black woman or a black man as their, their ultimate prize. It would just be nice to see. That doesn't mean, you know, I mean, I'm going to, I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to do my thing. I'm going to be dramatic and be like, Oh, I'm not watching the show no more. But every and time I say that, I always come back the next season or, or within a couple of seasons. So, uh, cause it's, it's ultimately it's just, it's, um, guilty pleasure content for us. And, and I think we both know that. So, uh, I enjoy it. You know, the, the way they always have like a villain in, uh, mm-hmm. in every single season. Um, it's just, it's, it's good. And there, there's a good, very good portion of it. That's just funny trash, uh, relationship TV, a uh, reality TV. So it's definitely a guilty pleasure of mine. Uh, you know, Matt, I, I wish him well. And I, and I, and I do want to acknowledge the pressure that he feels. And I imagine that it is immense being the first black bachelor, uh, in, in, in a franchise. And I, and I know that I, I don't know that it should, um, I don't know that I would, categorize it as pressure uh, i don't know that that's necessarily a good word um i think you should just acknowledge that there's an expectation but uh to me when you say i just feel pressure to pick a black woman it's like that wouldn't already be like an option for him i don't know it's, for me it just it just it just kind of rubs me a little wrong um with him saying that uh but you know we'll see what happens and if we get to the end of this and he picks, you know, I think that there's a woman there, there's a, um, um, you know, woman of, I think there's a, there's, there's a bunch of different, mm-hmm. there's a woman it's with a bunch of different, a diverse cast. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a diverse, they put a good diverse cast of, of, of young, young women uh, together for him. So, and you know, he could, he could go any kind of way. So it, it'll be interesting to, to see what happens, but no, I'm, I, I won't be, I won't be upset, but the day that it happens, it, it'll be nice, mm-hmm. you know, and, Hopefully I won't have dentures <laughs> by then <laughs> whenever it, whenever it happens. But no, nah, the way, the way you broke it down, I guess it makes a little bit more sense. Um, why you feel the way you do. Um, thank you, Jessica. I appreciate that. I'm gonna have to edit that. And out. I appreciate you. You know that enough for me to go to Trader Joe's. No, not that much. <sighs> I tried. Um, but in other dating news, let's take a, quick break because i want this to be our last break before we wrap up okay okay thanks so i sent you a post on instagram i think it was from the shade room but it turns out that our boy michael b jordan has found himself a black queen you sent me the post. i thought i sent it to you no i sent it to you i definitely sent it to you yeah, yeah, get the receipts. Ver- Pull this. them receipts. I sent it to you um, because you're busy doing your job during the day, so you don't have time to see things on social media. Yeah, good coverage. Yes, appreciate. <laughs> it. Uh, so Michael B. Jordan and Lori Harvey, who I'm assuming is Steve Harvey's daughter. You don't know? Come no, on, son. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't have time. You I can't know be my, talking about stuff that you don't know. About. I know my two daughters. That's it. Um, they're together and this is kind of a big deal because it has been known that Michael B. Jordan has a preference for women who are not black. So the fact that he is in a confirmed relationship with Lori Harvey, that's a big deal. That's growth. That's progress. Um, and I wish them the best, but it has me thinking between this pandemic and everything that's going on for those of you who are out in this world dating i feel for you Mm. i i have spoken to a lot of single women pre-pandemic and even then i felt for you so i can't imagine now and then just getting hollered at someone wearing a mask and you don't know what the the beneath the nose situation is the jawline the teeth you just it's a lot and and i i'm spoiled because i met you when i was 20 so I didn't really have to go through much of the chaos that comes with dating in this day and age or that day and age. So, you know, I know all the apps and I actually am on a dating app. I'm not dating, but I'm on a dating app. I haven't used it in a while. 
um, I found out that Bumble had a best friend feature. So I jumped on Bumble and because I'm a married woman and not trying to date someone, I didn't think anything of it. But I guess one day, because we're not very secretive with our phones, so we just kind of leave our phones laying around. He has the passcode to mine. I have the passcode to him. His, we steal pictures of the girls uh, from each other's phones. So I guess one day he happened upon my phone and saw like a Bumble notification, but didn't say anything to me when he saw the notification and then waited a day or two and said, so I noticed you had Bumble on your phone. I wanted to give you, I want to give you opportunity to come clean. But he had already, I guess he had already researched and seen that there was a, uh, a best friend feature, a so, friendship feature. So it's interesting because you talk about growth and that in and of itself is an example of growth because I, because I married and have been so for the last six years, I'm not privy to a lot of these, these dating apps. So I don't know, I wouldn't have known that Bumble had a best friend feature. I would have known, I wouldn't know any feature of these dating apps other than swiping left or right. That's generally a component of, of any, any that you'll download uh, and a, and a, a 26 year old David probably would have saw it and been like, yo, why are you on Bumble? So you know what I'm saying? You, so you, you David never spoke like this. You already stepping out. You know what I'm saying? I thought David, we had, I thought David, we was building, David never. I thought we was building a legacy. You know what I'm saying? The empire. I thought like you was, this. you was short. You my shorty. You know what I'm saying? You never. stepping out. No, but lies. Uh, you're right. I wouldn't have said shorty. Um, <laughs> but now I'm 30, I'm 33. And, and very, I'm 30. <laughs> just want to put that out there. Yes, dear. You're I'm, 30. You're I'm three young. years younger than me. I'm young. Uh, I'm 30. I'm, I'm no, very. He's I'm, 33. I'm 30. I'm 30. <laughs> You're right. I'm 33. Sorry. I'm 30. Stop talking. <laughs> Shush. I'm 33. I'm uh, way more secure. Uh, and like Jessica said, you know, we're just, I think trust is probably one of the, it's probably the biggest thing most couples crave uh, when they're in a relationship. But I think it's, it's the least attained uh, mm-hmm. goal for, for most couples, especially here in America. So I'm, I'm, I'm extremely blessed that, that we have that. And it's, you know, it's, it's, um, uh, mutual. mutual. Yes. Thank you. Goodness. Though so, I always, I'm, I accuse him of having an affair like once a quarter. Uh, so <laughs> I saw it and I was like, why is she on Bumble? But I didn't, I didn't overreact. I just went and searched and was like, there has to be a reason why she's, she's on Bumble. So, uh, I went and just just did a quick Google search, and I saw that it had like a best friend feature, and I knew that we were in a pandemic. She, uh, you know, uh, Jessica hasn't been working. She didn't work this whole past year of 2020. She didn't work at all. She's the primary. Uh, she's pr- she primary is primarily the, she's the parent who takes care of the girls during the day because, like you said, I'm I'm, I'm working. So our oldest is in kindergarten. She does virtual kindergarten, and we have a uh, soon to be one year old. So Jessica is managing all of that throughout the day. So she doesn't have a lot of time to check in with her girlfriends or run out and grab drinks or anything like that. So especially during the early stages of the pandemic, she just, there wasn't a whole lot of, uh, you know, a, a, she didn't have a lot of stimulating adult conversation unless it was with me. And at that, and usually it's and that's not stimulating. <laughs> <laughs> and it's usually at the end of the day when we're both just dead tired and we just want to go to bed. So it made sense that she would want to, you know, seek you know, um, you know, just see who's out there and see who would, who would need, who could be feeling similarly to her, uh, and just need somebody to reach out and, and make friends with so that you can just kind of touch base every once in a while. So it, it made sense once I realized that that's what it was. And, um, that didn't stop me from having a little fun with it when I, <laughs> I confronted her about it, but it's, uh, it's actually a really cool feature now that I, I, I think about it because and it couldn't have been more, I don't know how long it's been around, but um, it's perfect for, you know, the day and age that we're, we're living in where, you know, things have kind of starting to o- open back up now, but in the vast majority of people are still a little hesitant to kind of go out and, and live life like they used to know it. So it's, you know, it's a, it's a good thing, but that's definitely a, a sign of growth for me. And I'll just go ahead and, and be honest, you know, at, at 26, I would not have had, I would not have been that patient and I would not have taken a step back to think like, Hey, I know my wife, I know what she's about and I, I know the kind of person she is. So let me make sure that, you know, I look into this before I confront her about 
snooping on her phone and seeing. <laughs> I, I'm so <laughs> I'm so touched bubble. at your trust for me because um, even at 30, six years into marriage, if I had seen Bubble on his phone, I yeah. would have. Yeah. I'd have I remember. Some um, dishes. I think I was on Tinder at one point. It was like I don't know if we were married or if we were. We, you said you were doing like some market research or something. Yeah, I was. I can't remember for what it was something I was involved with. I think I was trying to to see the functionality of the app. Cause I think I had, I tried to start a social media, uh, company, uh, like a website for, um, for Christians. So, and I, I, I'd done it, I had partnered with someone else. And so I think I was doing market research in terms of like, if we wanted to incorporate that into what we were trying to build, because at the time I think our the only person, only company, out like that uh, for targeted strictly at Christians for social media was uh, Christian Mingle. So we were like, okay, well, what if we could build a unique social network, uh, but then also kind of maybe have a component of what has made Christian Mingle popular. So I think that's probably why I was on it. Um, but yeah, I told her, I told her and she was just like, why are you on Tinder? What are you doing on Tinder? Why do you need to be on Tinder? Let me see it right that's now. That's not my <laughs> I, I don't speak that deeply. Um, but yeah, uh, I I will I will light a fire. Yeah. So I will burn it all down if I suspect. Um, honestly, if I'm sitting on the couch and I look up and he's looking at his phone and he grins and it's like, <laughs> She's like what are you and it's, at? it's too happy of a grin, I'm I'm like wait. And like who's giving you that much 90, joy 90 uh, percent of the time i'm looking at memes that either and, my and that my brother usually, my cousins have sent me or my my, my brother alan have sent me and i'm just laughing at it and that's she usually it's, what it is but i am not and i know this is this might sound crazy to some but i think it makes it might make sense to others i love my husband i trust my husband i know the man i married but I also don't ever want to take that for granted. I know who I married. That's from Hamilton, by the way. Uh, we know. For the everybody, everybody knows. Uh, so I, I, I like the idea of staying woke and recognizing that things are always possible. Not saying he will, but just recognizing that things are always possible. So, so let me, um, let me, I, let me jump in right quick because you, you guys know I, I love my stories, right? And I don't mind telling them. I actually had this conversation with, um, with Bethany this morning because, um, uh, she had shared the, the meme that we're going to, when this is all over, we're going to have a conversation about capital versus capital. <laughs> and I, I told her that I had accidentally used the wrong capital for the promotions for our, our previous episode. Um, and we were just kind of talking about how my parents taught me to laugh at myself. So y'all know I love my story. So I'm going to try to be quick because we're almost at an hour. And I know Jess has a point she wants to make. But I learned very early on in my life that I am not a player, uh, nor do I have any sort of game whatsoever. So I'm going to take y'all back to middle school. <laughs> <laughs> All right? And Jessica knows the story. And so um, <laughs> and I'm not going to use any names because I think I might still be friends <laughs> with some of these parties in this story. So uh, I was in middle school, right, and I was I was in a re- in a relationship uh, with this with this girl. It was, black it was girl. an entanglement. <laughs> I had an entanglement with this girl, um, but throughout I think I want to say I was in like seventh grade. I really don't even know. Uh, and there was I was I was in a relationship with this one girl, so we held hands, <laughs> like sat together at lunch. That was the extent of our relationship. You didn't carry her books. You didn't carry her books to class. Nah. Cause I, my arms were full of mine. Yeah, that's a real relationship. Yeah. I don't think we had any, but I don't even think we had any classes together. So that was, you're I supposed to walk her to her class and then be late to your yeah, class. I, I, I had not time for that. Okay. So, um, uh, and there was this dead. other girl who, who I had known and who I'd always had a crush on. So I was with, I was with this other girl and you know, we were, it was cool. It was all right, but you know, it was, it was middle school. So you're not really ever really into anybody in middle school. So I was, I was, I was <laughs> talking to the other girl uh, who I was not with. And I was like, you know, I just really, I really like you. You know what I'm saying? And I, I feel like you like me too. And she was like, yeah, but you're with so-and-so. <laughs> and she was like, I can't, I can't, I'm not going to do that. So shout out to her for being very stand up citizen at, in, in, in middle school at, at age, you know, 12 or whatever. So I was like, Hmm, 
So me being a genius, <laughs> right? <laughs> I uh, I told the girl, my girlfriend at the time, uh, this is on a Friday. I told her that I was moving. <laughs> <laughs> And that we had to break up because obviously a long distance relationship isn't going to work. And she was, you know, she was heartbroken. Of course, she was like, "Oh, this is, seems so. This all seems so sudden <laughs> because it was." And um, but I didn't think it through. Like I didn't like I didn't clean up my locker. <laughs> I think it like and you know normally when someone moves uh, and they're leaving the school, like teachers, they'll make an announcement and you'll have like going away, like maybe like cake or cupcakes or something. Like it was just a regular Friday. Teacher was like, don't forget your homework. Chapter 37 assignment. Um, none of my <laughs> friends were like sad or anything. I got on the bus. Like, it might pick me up. And I didn't even think that come Monday, I'm going to be back in school. <laughs> so I was like, yo, I'm moving. And, you know, she was sad. So, you know, I gave a little peck on the cheek after uh, after school. And, I, you know, I rode the bus and went home. And I think it was like Sunday night. <laughs> it just hit me like, oh, shoot. Like, I got I to gotta go back to school. Um, <laughs> so then I walked back into school on Monday, and then she's sitting there looking at me like, <laughs> and I was like, "See what I ha- what had happened was is that I thought I was moving, and I but I didn't even know like the ins and outs of moving or real estate or anything like that." Um, so then word got around that I had just lied to her because I wanted to talk to this other girl. I didn't know and word then, got around. Yeah, and then the other girl found out, and she was like, oh, "I don't want anything to do with you." So. I was uh, I was a deadbeat for uh, it was like six months, and then I was able to uh, reestablish my reputation. I came back from it, and so I learned very early. I was like, you know what, <laughs> I'm not I'm not cut out for this for this, uh, this this player game type stuff. So I'm just gonna go ahead and play the straight and narrows. So yes, yeah, so because of his middle school experience, he's yeah. he's certain. That um he's not he's not built for so this. you don't have anything to worry about anyway I am never going to be naive to the idea that you know women always like people want what's what's good that someone else has so you know it's part of the staying woke you know it's part of you know the the busted challenge you, you literally just called me homeless like an hour ago though yeah but I mean <laughs> did you see yourself. Even you confirmed I was, it. I was. Um, I mean, I was. Dating is. It tough. was not my best moment. Marriage is also work, but you have to be aware of all possibilities. Even like, e- look at how many men of God get God get snatched up in some crazy scenarios. Your boys bought like how many Lamborghinis down in South Carolina? Uh, John Gray. John Gray's in South Carolina? Yeah, he oh, like I thought he was like out in Texas. No, nah, he right down 85. So, I mean, mm. I take that into account, not encouraging you to do nothing wild, because you do something wild, someone might end up dead. But the comments made by Jessica <laughs> belong to her and herself. They are not indicative of the views of, of those Rushed of us Vibes. here at Rushed Vibes yeah. as an entire uh, as an entity. Yes, yes, they are. Um <laughs> I'm just saying I am, you know, I feel like you should never take your partner for granted in the sense that you can't think that someone, someone else can just swoop in and snatch sure. them from you. Sure. Um, so that, that's definitely something that I just wanted to sprinkle. And I, I, I said, I did a lot of segueing to get to this point, but you know, I, for those of you who are dating, especially pandemic dating i feel for you i joined bumble because i really just you know i didn't get to do the whole dating online thing so i just wanted to swipe on people um that's really i know it sounds shallow um someone had a friend of mine jess she had posted on facebook that there was a friend feature so i was like oh cool so i can swipe on people and not get in trouble because i'm not like having an affair how dare you so I, I, it's fun. Um, I've learned a lot of my bias <laughs> biases, um, which can be a topic for another conversation. But in general, it's really just fun swiping, just swiping back and forth. I have made some very meaningful connections. I've had some nice conversations. You don't realize how little opportunities you have to kind of talk about yourself. Uh, And you really only get to talk about yourself when you're introducing yourself to someone and giving them the chance to get to know you and develop an opinion on you. So it's 
been nice, you know, building my profile and seeing what things about me interest people and, you know, swiping on someone and then realizing that you're a match and you're like, oh, yay. But it at the end of the day, I realized like I have enough friends and I don't even keep up with those people. So I, I really don't have the bandwidth to, yeah. to, to build friendships with new people. But there are a couple of people that I have connected with that I have made efforts and we have good conversation. Um, I'm just not a good communication friend. So well, it's kind of like, it's kind of like pen pals back in the day, you know, like when we used to have pen pals, oh, yeah. people you'd write to, or like, uh, uh, back when the internet was just America online, uh, and yeah. you would go into like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Going to like chat rooms and stuff. I remember there was a uh, we when I was living in Virginia, we had um, we had a computer, one computer for the whole family. Mm-hmm. One, that Pentium one, Four, yeah, one desktop. And uh, I got in the chat room and and met. Uh, I think there was this girl out in Louisiana, um, and we would just chat just about just random, just random stuff that we went through as as kids. And it wasn't like every single day. It was you know a couple times a week, maybe once every other week. Um, but it was just kind of nice to talk to somebody who was unfamiliar mm-hmm. and learn about uh, be a different cultures or what it's like living in a different state. Because uh, as a kid, you know, if you don't travel a lot, um, I knew I knew Virginia and North Carolina because my grandparents lived in North. My grandmother, excuse me, lived in North Carolina and we lived in Virginia. Um, and a lot of my traveling was just around the state mm-hmm. of Virginia or to Monroe, North Carolina. So it was kind of cool to learn a little bit about, <clears throat> excuse me, Louisiana and. You know, just somebody who I didn't didn't see every day. So no, it's I, I can I can appreciate that. It's it's definitely uh, valuable. Yeah. So um, I'm sure we'll span into this deeper. I have a random thing I want to say. I've been looking at you from the side a lot lately, and your nose is actually kind of cute from the side. Thank you. I just I just felt like saying that since since I feel like from the side. I said from the side. The the side. Well, it's, if you look at me. You're going to see no. it from the side. Oh, okay. I thought you were posing for the camera. I oh, was no. like, yeah, it's kind of cute from the side. Thank you. you but no. I don't know. I don't know too many men that want to hear they have a cute nose, but I appreciate you. You got a, you got a very masculine, sexy nose. Come here with that nose. <laughs> okay, I'm done. But yeah, so if you are seeking friendships, uh, I definitely recommend Bumble for friendships i actually even i talked about it with my therapist and she told one of her clients i guess she was kind of struggling with some you know postpartum loneliness so she recommended her client to use it so she was like what was that app you said you used?" so i told her so yeah it's it's fun it's easy and you know you can kind of get to a place where you're like i don't i don't really feel like pushing this relationship anymore and and you're good just don't give out your phone number too soon yeah so yeah that's it. So, uh, I think the next discussion Uh-oh. is going to be really heavy because you mentioned something about marriage being work, and work. we have had. We're going to give you all a little sneak work. peek. We're going to give you all a little sneak work. peek because during one of our test episodes, uh, that maybe we'll release one day, maybe we won't. Probably well, we almost ended up divorced. Probably not. You almost divorced me. <laughs> now we almost ended up divorced. Uh, we were talking, and, and you know, our, our, all of our arguments. They're never, they never spur from the actual topic that we're discussing. It's always an, a, just a, a, a side comment that one of us makes. Um, and then we, we like, well, wait a minute. What do you mean? And then we just dive into it. So we were having a conversation and I think I was just offhand. I was like, well, you know, marriage is difficult. And then Jess was like, I don't think marriage is difficult. And then we kind of had this back and forth and then we kind of ended it. But and I we didn't, didn't I we didn't, didn't di- but we didn't discuss it as a married couple. No. Because that would be the rational thing to do. That would be the mature adult thing to do. What did Jessica do? She went on her friends, sorry, our friends mm. podcast. Actually, she's your friend now because she let you do this. <laughs> okay. No, no, no. Let me, let me, I'm speaking. Speak. So she went on her friends. <laughs> just kidding, I love you, Jacinthia. She went on Jacinth, uh, our friend Jacinthia's podcast. Married and having fun. Married and having fun. I'll put them in the show notes as well. Uh, they talk about uh, um, uh, having fun having, in having fun and in, in the importance of sex uh, uh, in marriage, um, and, and especially from a Christian woman to Christian women's perspective. Bust it, um, bust it. Sorry. 
Really quick plug, but go check him out. It's it's fabulous. Well, one of my favorite podcasts that I listen to. I listened to. to the New Year's episode today. Uh, so she went. They had a women's retreat, and then they also t- they also Which turned was amazing. Yeah, whatever. And they turned that into an actual podcast episode. And this chick went on and literally threw me under the bus. What I was not there to defend myself, like literally oh. trashed me. I and so I'm sitting here doo, 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 downloading the Marion <laughs> and having fun podcast and I'm listening to it. I'm like, that's my wife. I was like, man, she's really going in on something. I'm like, wait a minute. That's, that's me. <laughs> she's talking about me. So I want you all to get ready for next week's discussion. Like, it's it's going to be ugly. I want you all to get ready for next week's but discussion. You know and I'm going to go ahead and change your stance. No, 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 I'm not. I'm going to go. I'm going to give you all the pre- premise is. I'm the, we're not going to give any more any more discussion on it tonight. I'm just going to leave you with the question. So if you see this, yeah. we'll, we'll make some posts about it throughout the week for Let those of, for those of you who who engage with us on social media. And we'll try to get a little bit more active. I know we're still getting acclimated to it. Uh, is marriage difficult? And that's the question. That's it. Is marriage difficult? Yes or no? And no, you and feel no 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 no, wait. no middle yeah, no no say yes or no, but then feel free to expand on your thoughts. Because it's not so it's not so black and white as some may presume. So that's what we're going to talk about next week. Oh, it's we'll on continue. Like Donkey Kong. We'll yeah, continue. we might not make it till next week. We'll we might need a bonus with, episode. We'll, this conti- week. we'll continue with the the relationship theme next week, and we'll talk about is marriage difficult. That may be the only thing we talk about because I imagine we both have a whole lot to say about it. It's going to be a long so, hour. So with that being said, there will be no busted challenges taking place. <laughs> Definitely not. We may actually need a bus. It challenges. Somebody's <laughs> going to be leaving here single. <laughs> um, but we're definitely going to. You know what? We're, no, we need to wrap no, up. No, elaborate. Just an extra I just point. said that. Who do you think has what opinion on marriage? Oh, they already know. So. Uh, they are listening. No, they're listening. <laughs> so um, we'll go ahead and close. <laughs> Like I said, look for that episode next week. Be sure to let us know if you think marriage is difficult or not, and we'll drop some some uh, some posts on social media um, just in case you forget or, or you're not watching this or listening to this in time. Uh, we definitely want to say thank you to all of our new subscribers on YouTube, everyone who's liked us on Facebook and followed us on Instagram. Um, for those of you who haven't maybe have stumbled upon us via a algorithm or whatever, uh, I'll drop all of our social media contacts uh, all of our social media profiles in the description below. I also add them in the show notes. If you if you found us on Apple, Google, or Spotify, which are the podcast platforms we're on, if you would like to support the channel, you can uh, via Cash App. So it just be rushed, you know, dollar sign rushed vibes. R U S H D V I B E S. New episodes every single Wednesday on YouTube here. If you're watching us, and then also on those podcast platforms. So um, subscribe and rate us. Subscribe and rate. Yeah, please do rate. Uh, we've got two so far uh, in terms of uh, reviews. We've got, I think the last time I checked, 10 ratings, which is awesome. They've all been five stars. We appreciate you. It's probably just my mom rating us five different times. I tried rating us, but <laughs> Apple, like Apple won't accept. Apple was like, uh, I, think, I think you're an owner of this podcast, yeah. man. But uh, no, thank you. But if you, if, if you are listening to us and you, know, you, you had a lot of fun listening and or, and or watching us, please do leave a review. Uh, and rate us because that helps other people find us as well. And, and feel free to, to share with family and friends. We had our uh, visitors from Djibouti and Ireland visit the site again. Don't think I forgot about y'all. I love y'all. Thank we appreciate you. you guys. Canada, Japan, when we go stand on our up. World tour. You got you got VIP. V- Just make yourself known. VIP. We got you. Uh, but so, we do um, appreciate y'all. Absolutely, absolutely. So, um, yeah, this is uh, episode six. This is really awesome that we've gotten six episodes into this and we're actually going to stick to our, our schedule. So we appreciate everybody joining the Vibe Tribe. We, uh, that was really loud, but we're uh, <laughs> we're going to get out of here. Um, get some sleep. It's still a pandemic, so be sure to wear a mask, socially distance. Wash your hands. And wash your hands. Stay safe, stay healthy. Until next time, I'm Dave. I'm Jess. This is Rush Vibes and we out. Be good. Peace. I done came way too fucking Stop me now Stop me now Stop me now Yeah, I done came way too fucking Stop me now Stop me now